As I grew up, a lot of things began to happen. Songs about heaven were the things they were singing in the Sunday schools. There is no weeping in heaven. There is no cry. There is no lag. There is no death. But as a boy, I kept seeing people dying every day and everybody crying every time. So one morning, one afternoon, so evening time, when I was only seven years old, I told my childhood friend, I said, come, we have been singing about heaven. No weeping, no hunger, no crying. And heaven is just touching down there. I mean, understand what I'm talking about. The firmament looks like if it's touching down somewhere. And I said, it's so close. Why are we singing so hard? Well, we can just get down there. Do you want to go to heaven? He said, yes, sir, let's go. So we started running physically towards heaven. And then a farmer met us on the way. He said, where are you going? We said, we are going to heaven. He said, get back. We said, no way. We are not going to get back. It took him plenty of effort to succeed in chasing us back on our way to heaven. Nineteen sixty-four, sixty-five. in my grandmother's little parlor, she had a little cupboard, and I turned that cupboard into a pulpit and had some three, four children who made the congregation, and I was their pastor. I was 10 years old. 1966, at 12 years of age, fascinated by the story of Moses, I walked up to a carpenter near the house. I said, can you make me a rod? He said, what rod? I said, the rod of Moses. He said, how does it look like? I said, anything it looks like. He said, what do you want to do with it? I said, to divide the Red Sea. I never knew what that meant. But I called my wife today and I said, Jeremiah 1 5. Before I formed thee in the womb, I knew thee. I said to her, I said, Prophets are not trained. Prophets are called before they arrive here. They are separated for their specific, unique function before they arrive on the earth. He made me in that road, and I was going to look for the Red Sea to divide until the Red Sea showed up.